You guys just wanted a fishing video. Oh, I know. I know. Not today. another episode of cast to fly today we're doing something different guys today I just wanted to cover some tips and tricks for you and uh, just share a little bit of information about how I set up for wet fly fishing and it's really just a cost savings tip really at the end of the day all right guys we're gonna try to get into this and uh, I don't have a studio or anything like that so <laughs> here's what we got we got my garage uh, anyway, so we're going to be talking about kind of a leader setup for wet fly fishing. A great way to save some money on leaders. And it's kind of like building your own leader, right? Um, so as most of you know, and I know a lot of you are new to fly fishing, which is why I wanted to share this um, information. But, you know, there's a ton of leaders um, out there, a lot of choices, and I know that's can be a nightmare too. Trying to decide, like when you're trout fishing, what's the best, what what's the best leader to use, right? Um, what's this six X mean? What's this zero X mean? Okay, uh, the bigger the number, the smaller the line. <laughs> that's the first thing. So, what we're what we're going to talk about here is is these leaders can really start to be costly. So anywhere from five to nine dollars depending on what brand and you know that, that can add up really quick especially if you throw on like a nine foot leader it's a six x and you start the day and then you start changing flies and you're cutting it back cutting it back cutting it back and pretty soon you're down to one x or zero and it's real thick and that would not work for for trout fishing for sure uh, you might be okay bass or something like that or chasing bluegill. That's probably fine. But in trout scenario, no, you would not be fine. So we're going to talk about how we can extend the life of your leader, you know, because this leader is still good. Like if it, like this is one that my kiddos used. Uh, it was, a, I think, an eight-foot leader. Butt section is great where it ties onto my fly line. It's perfect. But down at the end where we were tying flies on left and right, you know, it was, it was tore up really bad. So I cut it back. Now I've got like probably a four foot section. I'm down to where transition started basically from tapering down to the, the, the real small tippet area. So I've really got like a four foot section here of nice, sturdy <laughs> and rigid uh, line. So then the next thing is um, once you've done that and you've cleaned it up and your, and your butt section is really nice, there's no cuts in it or anything like that. You're good to go. You're going to want to pick up some micro rings. And there's all different brands out there, guys. These are not, I'm not sponsored on any of this stuff today. Uh, I've just found these on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. They're like six bucks or something like that. Um, these are two millimeter. There's a quantity of 10. But there's a ton of different brands out there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but they are very very tiny very tiny so what you're going to want to do is grab your hemostats and basically latch onto that uh, micro ring and it's best if you get locked down really good make sure you have a good connection hopefully you guys can see that that's kind of what it looks like right there it's kind of hard to see on the camera it's so small but i left me enough room to get my butt section tied through there so I'm going to take that, I got to throw on my glasses, guys. And I'm going to basically put that through that micro ring, and I'm going to put about five wraps in it. And moisten it. Make sure you get a good connection there. 
tight. And then I'm going to clean that up with my nippers. Just like that. So, now you've got this, I would say this is probably a 1x or even 0, uh, pretty thick. can't see that. Anyway, my ring is tied on, I swear. <laughs> now, this is where the cost savings comes into play, right? Some of you might be familiar with this already. Again, some of you are new to fly fishing, so here we go. Um, you'll find spools of tippet. All different sizes everything from zero seven eight whatever it's and what I run is uh, I, I carry a two a three a five and a six X I even have a seven I think somewhere but go to for trout is six um, X for me so what I'll do is so now you've got this four foot section pretty stiff um, section of, of leader that's gonna tie to your float line and then I'm gonna pull off a good section of uh, 6x now I'm gonna tie that section onto this ring also again just using a clench knot just like that lubricate it boom uh, and now I've got my connection so I'll clean that up Boom, done. So, cool thing is, now if you tear up this section of tippet, cutting back, cutting back, maybe it gets ripped up, I don't know, tore up against some rocks, something like that, go to the ring, cut off this section of tippet, add more tippet. You never touch this butt section again. So you're never replacing your leader all the time. You're never having to replace your, lead, your full leader. You could probably keep this on one of your reels for the entire season probably. And then just making sure this ring and this connection here is tight. Make sure it's good. And again, go to your ring, cut it off. Maybe you're doing trout fishing one weekend. Okay, uh, I'm going to put 6X on. Cool. Maybe next weekend you're going bass fishing. All right, cut the 6X off. Put some 3X on or some 4X. So that's what I like about it. It's, it's kind of a cost savings. I don't have to keep buying new leaders all the time. Um, I can kind of build my own, right? I'll show you my setup for for wet wet fly fishing. This is kind of what I did recently down on beaver tailwater. So I put my indicator basically just just up from my ring. So there's my there's my indicator. Here's my ring right here. And then I run this down. This is 6x. So I run it down. And then what I'll do and guys, where I'm successful down there and have been if I haven't shared with you before, I use um, a lot of different things when, it's, when, when the water conditions are really low and there's no generation going on. It makes it very difficult to fish down there. So I'll use a jig pig. This is by Hoots Custom Flies out of Fayetteville. Bunch of different colors. I have great success with white. It works great. It's white with a red collar. Works wonderful. I set this up so... It, it bounces along the bottom, kind of kicks up rocks, you know, kicks up along the top of the rocks and just kind of floats around. Um, the second option is a PJ's Finesse jig. And this is a 1 1 25th jig. Very small, lightweight, easy to throw. And it works great in the water. I use an olive or an olive brown. Olive brown is my go-to. Um, this thing kills it down there. Uh, again, when there's no no movement going on, no generation, you got still water. Um, this makes for a great presentation, and it can actually, when there is a little bit of movement in the water, this moves around just perfectly fine. And that indicator, if there's any kind of a wind, that's the only time you love wind, uh, and as a still condition, is that indicator will blow in the wind and pull this jig because it's so lightweight, and just kind of pull it. Um, in whatever direction the wind is blowing but ultimately this works great down there so you should check these out I'll leave a link in the description as well anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this video today if you'd like to see more content like this man I'll try to do my best to to put some together I'm in no way a professional 
<laughs> These are just tips and tricks that I use. I'm happy to share like I do everything with you guys. I share all my GPS points. I share my tips with you, my flies, what I'm using. I, I want you guys to be successful. I want you to get outdoors, get lost, have a good time. So if you'd like to see more stuff like this, let me know. Let me know what you're looking for, and I'll see if I can provide that for you guys. But anyway, appreciate you guys being here today. Hopefully next time I'll catch you out, out uh, on the water and not in my garage. But uh, anyway, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. See ya. guys I know there's been a few of you that ask like man how do you find these places okay we're doing that right now this is this is how I do it and it, it's not easy like here's one <laughs> just off the side of the highway and it's sometimes a little creepy you don't know what you're driving into roadside murder spot I, <laughs> I don't know you never know. Check this out though. Woo! This little creek, man. It's cool, man. Got us a little waterfall. <laughs>